Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're going to be doing another uh, outfit video. So this one's going to actually be four outfits. And uh, the theme is basically the hat that I'm going to be using from all of them. So you remember the Blood Money uh, quote unquote DLC, if, you, if it can so be called, uh, from summer of 2021? Well, it wasn't all that impressive and uh, most people, myself included, were not blown away by it. Uh, but arguably one good thing was added with it, or at least I'm here to make that argument today, and it was this hat. And so basically to unlock this hat, because we're going to do a whole bunch of outfits in this video, Video. well four of them uh, particularly because there are four variants of this hat to unlock it you have to have done the blood money contracts and i think it was the third one whichever gem is the third one that you unlock once you've completed that one on at least the lowest difficulty or maybe it was the hardest difficulty i don't remember uh, you can purchase these four hats from madame nazar i don't love the hat because of the weird design they have on them but they are a proper top hat which is the first time that's been introduced into red dead online so for fancy outfits you kind of need a top hat and we finally had it through this hat so i've designed four outfits that fully utilize these hats to their high highest potential and I'm going to show them here to you today and I will also be showing you uh at the end of the video I'll show you the sliders for this character because I wanted to design a character that looked really really good even clean shaven so that way if you want to have a fancy outfit like this but you don't want to have a big bushy beard your outfit still doesn't look like dog poop at the end of the video I'll show you the sliders for that but let's just dive on in and start off with the first outfit and so just a close-up look at the character first uh for the hair you're going to want to go with something kind of neat and uh trimmed decently well so it, it matches the fanciness I like the pompadour fade and I, of course, go with red because that's the color of my hair. Uh, but there are a number of them, just so long as it's a short, close-cropped, sort of uh, neater-looking haircut. It will look fine with all of these outfits. For facial hair, I went clean-shaven because I wanted to make a point of doing that. Uh, because with this outfit, I wanted them, or, or with these outfits, since they're fancy, I wanted it to look fancy like it went with it. But there are a number of facial hairstyles that I think also look quite good with it. The barkeep, in whatever hair color you've got, is, a, is one of the better-looking ones and I think still looks very good with all these outfits. Another one that looks quite nice is the Count. This one is basically the same as Barkeep, but a little bit more upswept, and you get a little bit on the chin. And arguably also the Pioneer. This one now obviously has some slightly more unkempt burns with it, but I think still looks quite good. So any of those facial hairstyles work if you want some facial hair. Otherwise, like I said, this one was uh, this character that I've created here was specifically designed to look good with no facial hair. All right, and so you can see the full outfit here displayed before you. It's quite monochromatic, as all of these outfit outfits will be, uh, but I think it looks very good. So let's just go through the items that make up the outfit. And now, obviously, you can see that we're starting off with the uh, Duplicis top hat, which is, like I said, kind of the theme for all of these, is that each outfit's going to use this hat. And we're going to use the white variant for this one. Now, like I said, uh, obviously, the reason I like this hat so much is because it's actually a real top hat. It's tall enough, and the shape is just perfect. If they would introduce some versions of this hat for even just these exact same colors that didn't have all this extra design and embroidery on them, that would be even better. But honestly, it's not that distracting and still looks pretty good. So that's the hat for this outfit. Now for uh, just this first outfit, um, we don't have any white, like strictly speaking, white ties, but I think that the light gray variant to the puff tie, so the second variant, looks very good with this outfit. So that's the neck where I went with. For the coat, we're going to be going with the white variant of the Daventry jacket, so the first variant there, again, just looks really, really nice. For our vest, there's a couple options that work passably well, but I think the white variant of the Richfield vest is going to be the best option because it's nice and clean and plain and doesn't really draw away with any other design aspects. For our shirt, as often is with the fancy outfits that I designed, the best option is the Cawherty shirt, and obviously the third variant, this white one, is the obvious choice. For our gloves, I went with the white variant of the Mount Fleet gloves, just because they were clean and matched the outfit, outfit pretty well, but really any white gloves would work fine. For our buckle, we went with the last variant of the Sharp buckle, because it's uh, mostly white. Now, obviously, a belt buckle is totally optional, but I think it looks very good. For our weapon equipment, we have the studded bandit gun belt, and we went with the third variant, the white one. And then for the offhand holster for the this one we did the studded, uh, studded bandit holster but we did the second variant for this one because it's the most white and I think looks very good with the outfit even though the main hand holster is black. For the pants the best option are the white clerk pants they're very plain and very clean looking and for the uh, footwear I was going to do dress shoes but then I decided the uh, first variant of the Calhoun boots actually looked very good with this outfit and so that's why I used these and then for our spurs we have the white variant of the Gurdon Morrow spurs and so that is the entire white outfit I think it looks very nice definitely a very sharp looking outfit. Definitely great for uh, times about town and I like wearing it for PvP because it really helps you stand out uh, but you basically shine like a beacon in this outfit. So that is outfit number one, the white one. Let's move on to outfit number two. And here we have outfit number two, the black one. And now this one is probably the probably most classy looking outfit on the list and I quite like the way it turned out. So again for our hat we're obviously going to be using the Duplicis top hat and this time we're using the black variant. This time we're going to use the black variant of the puff tie. 
For our coat on this one, we're going to use the first variant of the tail coat, this nice clean black looking one. In my opinion, the best vest for this outfit is the ninth variant of the paisley vest, this clean dark black one. Our shirt for this outfit is going to be the first variant of the cowherdy shirt, the black one, obviously. For the gloves, the tenth variant of the workman's gloves are my favorite choice. They're a nice clean black uh, leather looking one. For our belt buckle, again, totally optional, but I like the uh, second to last variant of the sharp buckle because it kind of looks a little bit blackish, especially in most angles. And for our weapon equipment, we're going to use the uh, Levens gun belt and the third variant of this and the matching offhand holster, so black and silver. I think it looks great with the outfit. The Levens gun belt is something that you unlock through the Moonshiner roll, so if you want to get this one, you have to get that roll and level it up so you can unlock this gun belt and the uh, corresponding other weapon equipment with it, and then you can purchase it. So that is the best option for weapon equipment for this outfit. For the pants, of of course, the obvious option is the black variant of the tuxedo pants. They just look plain and simple the best. And of course, if you can't get these or don't have them or whatever, any other clean black pants would work fine. These are just the obvious best choice. And for our footwear, we're going to use the third variant of the Calhoun boots, these nice clean black ones with the silver toe. And then we'll use the third variant of the Gurdon Moro spurs as our spurs. And so obviously it's going to be pretty similar to the white one because we stick to the same type of themes. We have the same hat and we want to stick with that sort of mo uh, monochromatic look, but it definitely looks unique in several ways. And now with this one, even though it's incredibly fancy looking, I would say it's a hell of a lot more subtle than the white one uh, and looks quite good. It's probably more applicable in a broader range of uh, different situations. But yeah, so if you want a very fancy monochromatic looking black suit, this one is a excellent option. So that's number two. Let's move on to outfit number three. So now we get the most garish one on this list, the red suit. And now even though it is very garish, I still think it looks pretty dang good. So let's go through the items that make up this suit. So again, we're going to be using the Duplicis top hat, obviously, and the red variant is, of course, the obvious choice. Our neckwear for this one is the fifth variant of the puff tie, this red one with very light black stripes on it. For our coat, we're going to once again be using a tailcoat, this time the fifth variant, the red one. For our vest, again, there's a couple different options that would work pretty well, but the red variant of the opulent vest, number two on the uh, list, is my absolute favorite. It looks excellent and matches the outfit better than any other option. For the shirt, we're going to once again go with the Cawherty shirt, this time the fifth variant, the nice red one that looks perfect with this outfit. For our gloves, we just wanted some red gloves, and the best ones I could find were the sixth variant of the riding gloves, so these nice red ones. For our belt buckle, again, which is totally optional, I went with the sharp buckle again, and this time I did the second variant, mostly just because it has a red skull on it. I couldn't really find any that were any more red than that, so that's the belt buckle I went with. For the gun belt on this, this one, I did the sixth variant of the Regent gun belt and the matching offhand holster because it's red and silver and looks very, very nice with this outfit. Obviously, this is a bounty hunter thing. So if you want to get this gun belt and offhand holster, you're going to have to have the bounty hunter roll and level it up to the point where you unlock the Regent gun belt and then you can purchase this one. Uh, I think it looks very good and obviously it's red, so it matches the outfit quite well. For our pants, we're going to once again be going with the tuxedo pants because they're the obvious choice and the fifth variant are a nice red that almost perfectly matches the jacket. So those are the pants for this outfit. Then for the boots, we're going to stick with the Calhoun boots, this time the fifth variant. So once again, we're using the red color for them. And our spurs are once again the Gurdon Morrow spurs because we have this nice clean red variant, the fifth one again. So those are the spurs. And so all in all, a ridiculously garish looking outfit. But again, I think it actually looks pretty dang good. It's very well put together and nothing really clashes. And so although it's probably pretty rare that you might find yourself wanting to wear a full red outfit, if you do, I think this one is the best one I've ever come up with. Uh, now red obviously not being a color I enjoy too much. I'm maybe not the best critic for it, but this one does look quite nice and looks pretty dang fancy. So again, if you want to really stand out in a PvP lobby or just maybe even blend in in San Denis, this outfit is a pretty good choice. Or I guess if red is just your favorite color. So that's outfit number three. Let's move on to the fourth and final one that we're going to show you today. All right, and so for outfit number four, obviously we have the blue guy. And so uh, this one might be my favorite out of the four. I'm not typically a fan of the light blue, but it just seems to really work with this outfit. So let's go through the items that make up this outfit. So the hat we're going with, obviously, once again, is the Duplicis top hat, and this time the blue variant. Our puff tie this time is going to be the ninth variant. It's this light blue one with the dark blue uh, vertical stripes on it. Our coat is going to be the Daventry jacket, and I chose to go with the 10th variant because it matches the pants better. If you want to go slightly lighter to match the shirt and the vest better, then the... Uh, 
7th variant is probably a better option, but I just think the 10th variant looks considerably better with this outfit. We're once again going to be using a opulent vest for our vest on this one, and the 9th variant, this light blue paisley looking one, is obviously the best choice. The shirt I decided to go with was the 8th uh, variant of the Cawherty shirt. Again, here there are two different options. You have this one, or the 4th variant, which is just a darker, probably richer blue. I just thought the lighter, slightly more pale version looked a little bit better with the suit when I tried them, you know, I did them side by side and I liked this one better. But I could honestly see see either option and both of them work pretty dang well. For our gloves we needed a light blue glove that was pretty clean looking and so the obvious option and the only one I was able to find was the sixth variant of the Mount Fleet gloves. For our belt buckle which is obviously optional I couldn't find anything better than the turquoise buckle which is one of my favorite ones to use because of the turquoise and you know, just the iconic style of it. Uh, but that's the belt buckle I went with. And then for the weapon equipment, I once again went with the Levens gun belt, this time with the fourth variant, because it has a light blue and kind of a copper trim look to it, which I just think looks really cool and unique and matches the outfit better than any other gun belt I tried. And for our pants, we're going to stick with the if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. And we're going to use the ninth variant of the tuxedo pants, because like I said, they match the jacket almost perfectly and they look excellent with the outfit. I would hope it doesn't shock you to find out that I chose to use the eighth variant of the Calhoun boots with this outfit so once again we're using the same style boots that we've used for the entire video this time uh the light blue ones with the silver toe just because they look excellent and to top all of that off we have the eighth variant of the gurdon morrow spurs the nice clean blue one so i hope this outfit isn't too shocking it makes perfect sense at least in my mind the way that i uh made all the decisions on this one and like i said even though i'm not typically a fan of lighter blues i actually really like the way this outfit looks so i'll leave it up to you why don't you let me know down in the comment section which one of these outfits is your favorite or just the one that you could most likely see yourself wearing if you were going to dress up real fancy. Like I said, I think the blue one's obviously my favorite just because it's probably the most iconic and unique. There's not a whole lot of good looking blue monochromatic fancy outfits in this game and I think this is one of the few. Hope you enjoyed all these outfits. Like I said, I'm going to show you the sliders for this character now if you'd like to recreate the custom character I've got here. But with all that in mind, thanks a ton for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end and have a nice day. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.